Get ready for your daily dose of marketing strategies and tactics from entrepreneurs with the guile and experience to help you find success in any marketing capacity. You're listening to Marketing School with your instructors, Neil Patel and Eric Sue. All right, everyone, it's time for another episode of Marketing School. I'm your host, Eric Sue, And I'm Neil Patel. And today we're going to talk about how you can keep a digital marketing team motivated. So first and foremost, I guess I can start things off. For us, what we do internally is we use Slack. Uh, that's a little chatting tool. And what it does is we also have a little plugin called Geekbot. That's G-E-E-K-B-O-T. And this allows us to kind of see what's going on at a high level. So, you know, everyone has their individual goals, but Geekbot is a individual stand-up tool uh, that, that will send messages to people every single day saying, okay, you know, what are you doing? Uh, what are you struggling with? And things like that. And what we do is we get on a call on Mondays and then we discuss, you know, what people's, you know, top three priorities are. And then, you know, we see if anybody's blocked on anything. So having a stand-up and just being very communicative with your team, you know, does actually lead to more motivation because, I've heard in the past where people are just, you know, they feel lost, you know, people aren't communicating with them. And really being a part of a team is communicating and sometimes even over communicating. So using tools like Slack, you know, having these uh, these top three meetings are really just a uh, just a starter to, to, you know, making sure that your team is operating like a well oiled machine. The next thing I would do is knowledge sharing. So every or you can pick a day, but we found Friday to work the best because people are winding down. What you want to do is get everyone together. If you're a virtual company, you can do it over a Google Hangout. And everyone should be sharing something new that they learned that week. It doesn't have to be marketing related. Ideally, it should be. But what we found is knowledge keeps people happy. If individuals feel that they're growing, they're much more likely to stay within a company. They're more likely to put in more time, energy. And the reason being is they feel that they're growing as an individual. It's that simple, right? Everyone as a human naturally wants to feel progress. So if others or everyone on your team is sharing knowledge with each other, it's going to make everyone grow in their knowledge, feel that they're progressing, and they're going to be happier as well as marketers. Great. And speaking of education, our mutual friends at Digital Marketer, they have awesome certifications. And I'm actually putting uh, part of my team through these certifications right now where you know people can learn paid search, they can learn content marketing, they can learn about e-commerce, and really the videos are really well done and you can actually track the progress of each individual team member. So, you know, if you have let's just say 5 people on your team, you would be paying $295 each month. You can also pay for an annual version too. We're not affiliated with them, but um, you know, we're we're big supporters of or at least I am of of what they do over there. So, if you want to keep people uh, in the know when it comes to marketing, Digital Marketer, uh, their certifications are really really good. You should also consider doing team activities. As a t- If everyone works better as a team, they communicate better, they're going to be more productive, clients are going to be happier. If there's no clients, but it's more so they're really doing internal stuff for your own company, like let's say if you're Expedia or uh, Microsoft or whatever it may be, they're going to get more work done. So what we like doing is team activities. It could be you go and you pay a company and they set something up. That's expensive. We don't really do that, but I know bigger companies do that. What we tend to do is simple stuff. Hey, everyone, let's play basketball together. Let's play baseball together. Or let's go just grab drinks after work. Just certain team activities. And like if we're doing drinks, we'll do contests and like mazes. And while you're drinking, you have to go do games like fine eggs or whatever it may be. But just stuff that's fun. And you can just Google for team activities or team bonding activities or whatever it may be on Google. You'll find a ton of lists of ideas. We did once did a scavenger hunt throughout a city, right? The city of San Francisco. That was fun. And people had to go and find different things throughout the whole city. But doing activities like that really makes people gel together and they become way happier, right? They start bonding and they'll even start hanging out with each other after work hours, becoming real friends. And you'll notice an increase in their productivity. Right. That's a big part of things. I mean, let's say you're the owner of the company. It's really your job to bring in the best people. And it's really, it comes from the top, right? The people that you hire, you should always be asking yourself, is this somebody I'd want to hang out with after work? Because the fact of the matter is you might be working with these people, eight, nine, 10, 11, whatever hours it is each and every day. You have to be able to, you know, work together with these people and, you know, ultimately, you know, be their friends. So one thing that you can also do, let's say you're hiring people, is you can actually give them, you can do profit sharing, you know, and spread that amongst the company. But what I like to do, and I'll give you an example here, 
let's say I'm hiring somebody for paid advertising. Well, I might give them a base salary and that's what a lot of uh, other agencies do. They just give people a base salary. But to me, I have to think about, you know, from a, from a team member's perspective, a base salary is just a base salary, right? Oftentimes I'm trying to grow these accounts. I'm working with the clients. I'm nurturing the relationship as a paid advertising manager. Ultimately, it is performance based, right? So, uh, you know, as an as an owner of the company, what I what we've implemented now is we're giving them a percentage of upsell revenue. So, let's say for example, they add additional, you know, ten thousand dollar management fee for us each month, and you know, we give them five percent. That's an additional five hundred dollars a month. Think of it this way: if you're managing multiple clients and you're doing a really good job across the board, that revenue is going to start to stack for you, and it starts to become pretty significant for each and every individual team member. Another thing that we like doing is we give each individual a budget, right? So if your team is working at a large corporation, you can do things like profit sharing. Sometimes they have stock grants, but that's not always in your control. Let's say if you're managing a department, but what is, is you're typically given a marketing budget and we give a portion of that, a really small fraction, tiny portion to each individual within the marketing team. And we tell them, go create your own website and go try to market it. As a group, we come up with a competition every single quarter. So that could be who ranks the highest for a key term or who gets the most amount of email collections or who gets the most amount of social media fans, whatever it may be. Set a new type of marketing task slash goal each and every single quarter. You could do monthly as well, but we found it to be a bit too time intensive and it could also distract people away from work. We also found that doing things monthly doesn't always work because some tactics like SEO take longer than a month unless you're going after a really easy key term that no one's ever ranking for. And by letting people create their own sites, sharpen up their marketing skills and compete with each other, we usually find that it brings out that competitive nature as a group. Not only does it motivate them more, but it makes them learn more and makes them way more aggressive in a positive way, right? Like we set restrictions, like no black hat techniques allowed to be used, no gray hat techniques, et cetera. But it makes them more aggressive. And that way when they're working on company-related campaigns, they're going to be much more aggressive at getting things done, uh, execute faster, and of course, they won't use any shady tactics because when we're using these competitions, we set restrictions similar to the restrictions that they have within their workload. Right. And I'm going to take a, a step back. Earlier, I talked about the top three things people are working on for the week. So we start the week with that meeting. But then also on uh, Thursdays, we actually come back and we do a recap. So each and every person goes through the top three in in terms of what they did exactly, how they fared uh, on those top three items. And then there's also two columns, and this is an Excel sheet. It's very simple, um, or a Google sheet. And it talks about one big thing that they learned. It might have been that they, you know, uh, read like a specific tactic that really, you know, changed the game. So, for example, one of the, the people from my team this week, um, you know, started using Ad Expresso, which is a great tool to help you scale Facebook ads. Um, and his mind was totally blown, and he's just sharing kind of what he learned from it. And then we also have one big accomplishment too. So, you know, it might be, um, you know increasing the ROI on one account by, you know, 300% or something like that. So, you know, it's, it's really, it, it caps us off in a good way. And, you know, oftentimes we're going to, we're going to find that the, the top three items that people were working on, you know, maybe they only got one of them done, but there's always a reason as to why they weren't able to accomplish the other things. And it also holds people accountable as well. Cool. And that's pretty much it on my end. I don't really have anything else that I really use, Eric. I don't know if you have anything on your end. Great. I'll cap it off with, uh, there's one tool that we really like using as well. Uh, it's called 15.5. So that's the number 15 and then spell out five. 15.5 is great for also keeping a pulse on people in terms of how they're feeling on a scale of one through five. And then, you know, they'll also talk about how they're doing in terms of their uh, objectives and key results or their key performance indicators. You can just get a better pulse on people. And for us, you know, we're like a, we have a hybrid kind of model where, you know, we come into the office uh, Mondays through Wednesdays. That's where we get to collaborate and really fix things. And then Thursdays and Fridays, people actually get to work uh, from home too. So, you know, it's, it's really about keeping a good pulse on, on everything. And, you know, tools like Slack and all these other things, you think, you know, they might seem a bit excessive, but they really uh, serve their needs. So I think that's it for this episode of Marketing School. We'll see you tomorrow. This session of Marketing School has come to a close. Be sure to subscribe for more daily marketing strategies and tactics to help you find the success you've always dreamed of. And don't forget to rate and review so we can continue to bring you the best daily content possible. We'll see you in class tomorrow right here on Marketing School.